I've just left the Vikings area after doing two more rides and I absolutely love this area. You're Munganda, uh, you get some fantastic views over the lake. Um, and it's just, you got this two piece of track next to each other over the beautifully themed entrance arch right here. Um, and it's quite whippy down, down that last drop because uh, you've got quite a few sharp turns and it's kind of low to the ground in the terrain. Um, and then before that I did Loki. Um, sort of, I was going uh, one way first and you've got quite a bit of air time as you go over the top and get pushed into the seat. As I was go, kind of going backwards at the top. Um, a bit of photo and then it was just forceful into the restraint when I was going forwards at the top when it was going the other way and you really get near misses with the cars as you're coming kind of over the other car as it's going down or as it's coming up it's really really good um, really unique ride especially to the UK um, but yeah I love the Vikings area I think I'm going to do Accelerator next and then Maelstrom I haven't seen Shockwave going around which is interesting hopefully I'll get on that later as well as um, air race, I haven't seen that going either. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, it's brilliant. And also, I didn't mention in my intro this. Um, some interesting updates on one of the park's flat rides. They've got a great lineup of flat rides. Obviously, I've already done two of them um, Loki and Thor. But uh, Drunken Barrels is closed for the rest of the season. Um, so I might take a look at that if I do Sheriff Showdown later. Um, of course, I'll probably do Sheriff Showdown and The Haunting close together because um, they're two fantastic dark rides um, but yeah I love the Vikings area I might come back here later and do um, one of the rides again it's pretty much Walker <laughs> yeah, but at least it's walk on. <laughs> That's a set, yeah, it's walk on. <laughs> oh, this is. This is good. Yeah. Well, this is going to be good. <laughs> just had a further two rides here uh, on an adventure cove now um i think i'm gonna do shockwave next because it is testing that oh it's i can't i can't tell if it's actually running or not um or if it's just testing um but i've just been on maelstrom um fantastic driving it's a very short cycle but it always is i do think i prefer cycling later now because you get a, a longer cycle however the force on it was incredible um, you get some great views over Thomas Land while you're on there. I mean, um, last time I remember seeing that the Fat Controller did a little uh, performance in uh, Thomas Land, but because it's right next to the, the front entrance to the park. Um, but Adventure Cove is definitely the thrill focused area. It's like they've got one area where all the thrill rides are. So you've got Air Race and Shockwave, which I'm hoping to do. And you've also got um, Wave Swinger, which I might do later because um, the Flying Dutchman's closed today. but I might do a wave swinger. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping to do Shockwave next if it's open. I think it is because I think I just saw someone going to the queue. So, um, yeah, yeah, there's people on it. Um, Intermin stand up, um, and I'll be getting my last rides on it because it won't be a stand up um, as of very soon. So, um, yeah, I'm. They are doing like a little thing promotion wise for it where it says the last stand, 1994 to 2023. Um, but yeah, uh, I also did Accelerator before I did Maelstrom. Fantastic Vekoma family boomerang. Uh, you can just see the, the, the lift hill for it just above the bounty, the pirate ship up there. You can just about see the top of the lift hill. Um, one of the best family rides for part, the force on it was incredible. I, mean, I was on the front row, so I went really far up the spike as well. It's a brilliant family coaster, that. It's quite underrated as well. Um, so... Yeah, and the theming is incredible. As much as it's the only coaster here that's not part of a themed area, because if you look at, like, Shockwave's part of Adventure Cove, Troublesome Trucks is obviously part of Thomas Land, and Jormungandr's part of Vikings. Accelerator, it's very well themed with all the car props and stuff in there, in the queue line. However, it's not... Um, it, it's, it's not in a themed area. 
Um, but I still really enjoy it, you know. And you've got the haunting down there, which I'm going to do later. One of my favourite dark rides. So, yeah, um, Maelstrom and, and uh, Accelerator. Um, two further rides here. And, I mean, yeah, people who said there's not enough thrill rides here. Maelstrom and Shockwave and Air Race are fantastic thrill rides. So it's still worth coming here. Um, yeah. And now it's just going into a cycle. And I've just had a further three rides in Adventure Cove and I've just done the Bounty. Um, a fantastic pirate ship here on the lake. Um, you really get some good views. Um, it's not the most intense pirate ship, I don't think, even though it swings really high, so you really get that sort of floaty sensation um, on there. Um, and it's really well themed as well, so it's a fantastic ride, and it really adds the energy to the lake as well. Um, yeah, it is, it is really quite intense when you're at the top, and you kind of, especially if you look up as well, uh, it's really intense. Shockwave, I just did as well, because it's opened. Um, that was the uh, second ride I did in Adventure Cove, um, after Males, uh, no, the third, after I did Males from, um, uh, Wave Swinger. So, Shockwave, yeah, it was a little bit headbashy on the loop. I did have to wait a bit longer because I queued for the front row, but it's always worth doing it on the front row because it's, it's, it's a front row ride for me. So, um, it's like, yeah, my feet left the floor on the zero G roll. That's going to be guaranteed <laughs> that's going to happen. If you go on that ride, you, your feet are going to leave the floor. It's really a little bit rough. I don't know if it's because of the rain or... I, I don't know. But it's still a fantastic coaster um, with very unique restraint system as well. And I did get the on-ride photo with it being the last ever um, day that I'll come in here and do it as a stand-up. Um, so... Uh, the duck <laughs> so uh, yeah, the duck's like underneath uh, the bounty just kind of getting, just, just carrying on like just swimming around but that's how used to being at a theme park where there's rides around the lake um, yeah shockwave's just incredible um, and it was running amazingly um, it's really fun I just love coming back on it it's a top 10 UK coast it's the most underrated coaster in the UK I think um well, yeah, Wave Swinger. Wave Swinger is not too intense. It's more just chilled out. But then you do get some nice views of like Maelstrom and Shockwave on there. Um, and then I did uh, I did Air Race just before or just after I did Shockwave, um, which is um, a, a Zamperla Air Race. Uh, the hang time on there is really good, but it is really comfortable. And you get like two different cycles where you spin round one way and then you spin the other. Uh, it's a bit more natural the second time when you kind of swing outwards. Um, well, that was what the cycle I got. I think it does have a few different ones, but um, yeah, I really enjoy it. It's, it's really quiet. It's dead for a Saturday as well. I think it's because it's kind of at the quietest time at Drayton Manor, because um, obviously we're between um, summer and October half term, so that's probably why it's so quiet. But yeah, I did queue for the back row on the Bounty so I could get a an, an more intense ride, but yeah really really enjoying uh, this and i'm about to try to the haunting which is my favorite dark ride here one of my favorites in the uk and it's my second favorite ride here at the park after shockwave so i'm really looking forward to that Oh yeah, we'll probably see the score at the end, because, uh... yeah, there's the cow. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, I've just come out of the haunting and I was a bit worried because um, I just did Sheriff Showdown before this and uh, the haunting, the gates were shut. Um, which I was like, oh no, like one of my favourite rides at the park closed. But um, no, I managed to do it. And the great thing is they've also cleared some of the trees at the entrance so you can really see that entrance. And obviously you've got the one over there, which is like the main entrance to the ride itself, but that's just like the sort of courtyard um, area. Um, it's an incredible ride, it really is. Um, so you kind of go into the shipping container and you get introduced to Dr. Ghostman um, because we're about to experience, um, we've been, we're volunteers to see um, the most exciting um, and most important paranormal activity um, uh, that, that they've seen, that they've witnessed. Um, and we've been invited to come along to the vicarage where Drayton Green Vicarage, in, um, where of course that paranormal activity um, has been cited as being some of the strongest. Um, so you, it's like a live stream, you've got all this scientific equipment in a shipping container, um, and then you make your way through into the skeleton corridor. And I, I don't know if there was, um, but there was a lot of smoke, I, I, I know that, but I don't know if, if it was there. Last time, there seemed to be new lighting in the skeleton corridor as the skeleton like lowers down for, as you look up into the ceiling. There seemed to be new like UV sort of lighting in there um, so you can see the skeleton. I don't know if that is the case or if it just kind of um, felt like that. I don't know if maybe some of the lights had been fixed in there. Um, but, you know, you, <laughs> it, that's really good in there. Second preacher, you got the lady of the house um, who... Um, doesn't like people visiting the vicarage so um, just con continuously gets angrier until um, this demonic sort of spirit releases um, and you've got um, it's like this it's quite a scary face um, that she she has on there like it's really it's really really good it's a really intense sort of dark ride that and then all the picture, like the mirrors lean forward. You, there's, I noticed a lot of smoke in that room. Also, the floor kind of moves up and down as well, which I hadn't noticed before. Um, you got all the ceiling lights up. You got all these bodies hanging down because there was an event that happened um, in that room. It's like a sort of drawing room. And there was an event that happened in that room and you got all these dead bodies hanging down. It's a really, really incredible ride, that. Uh, and then into the Vacoma Madhouse, all this UV lighting comes on. You got the Midnight Syndicate duh, 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 oh, soundtrack, which I absolutely love. Um, it's um, it's known as On Hallowed Ground, um, and you can find it pretty much anywhere. So it's a really good soundtrack. Uh, I've found myself listening to that a lot. And also you got the Spectral Masquerade in there, in the the first one, which is more of a piano kind of spooky vibe I'd love the drone as you're waiting because I just got straight in because it just opened I love the drone in the queue line as well and I love on the madhouse um, you go in um, 
and because I was on sort of looking at it from the doors I went through the left hand door which I normally go through the right but I went through the left this time um, and what's really interesting is like um, you kind of lean back into your seat on that side and but you can feel yourself moving but it's because obviously the way the madhouse works is the room spins around you and then the gondola rocks a little bit but because the um, uh, like because the, the way the um, the gondola and the room tilts at the same time at first you kind of lean back and you can feel yourself moving but you don't know where you're going because you can't see the room moving it's really unusual that and there's also this like coffin in the middle of the room you've got all these big faces on the pillars at the sides that light up you've got a ghost flying around um, the ceiling's got all these like wooden beams on and yeah it's, it's an incredible world you've also got all these coffins in the floor as well as you actually go all round on there. Also the themed, there's like themed little fences at the side of the madhouse, like at the back of the gondola. You've got these themed sort of fences in, which it's better than just having perspex there. Um, it runs really smoothly. You've got, um, it does, as it starts to go all the way over near the end of the ride, it does pick up the speed and you really feel like you're going at quite some speed as, you, as you're going over. Um, yeah it's an incredible one and then you've got the little button that you press at the end and the light comes on whether you've experienced paranormal activity or not um it's a brilliant ride fantastically themed it's my second favorite ride here after shockwave but yeah i, I just i can't get enough of it I've, this is the third time i've done it now um and i just every time i do it the more i love it <laughs> incredible and it's the scariest place under one roof and I think since it was refurbished in 2019 which is its second refurbishment they added the lady of the house and that is very it's quite scary and it really adds to the sort of it, it, it's not exactly a thrill ride because it's a dark ride but you know you could take young kids on there it's just that that is quite scary and then just over here there's a little update on drunken barrels it has closed the the rest of the season and it's been cladded in this wooden boarding which is interesting I lasted this in June I didn't do it last time I came very interesting what's going on it looks to be a wild west theme especially with sheriff showdown next to it um yeah i did show showdown before obviously that it's just a shame the uh, the screens in there weren't working um i did get my score at the end but i think it was 7100 so i didn't get a bad score but yeah i might go back on there later because i didn't get any bonuses or the, the little pre-show because the screens were frozen on like zero score but yeah, it's still a very well-themed ride, and the star cloth really adds to the immersion in there.
Uh, soundtrack. <laughs> I've just visited Thomasland, um, the fantastic kids area over here. It's probably my favourite kids area in the UK. Yes, I actually prefer it to Peppa Pig World because the, it's got both. It's got the theming and it's got some decent rides. Troublesome trucks. I did it on the second car, so it wasn't really forceful. However, the, the, the last few turns are still whippy. They're smooth, you know, they're not like jolty. Um, and I mean, if you want that experience, you, you do your Munganda because um, that has a few whippy turns, but a little bit jolty. Uh, you know, I love that, uh, that coast, it's classic. Um, obviously having two junior coasters at a park and they are very different. Um, but yeah, it's very whippy. Um, I did submarine splash again because uh, I did it on my own so it wouldn't stall. And, yeah, the theming on there is very good. Um, you've got characters like Thomas, Harold and Percy. And there's also like a submarine with a periscope coming out of the water as well. Um, it's, you know, you've got all these boards around the side with like uh, theming. The soundtrack is catchy, I, I will say that. As much as it's all engines go and it's a bit, um, well, it's, it's, it, it is a bit, it gets stuck in your head quite easily. However, oh, I've just seen accelerate, get to the top of the lift hill. There we go. Um, it, it is a very catchy soundtrack, I will say that. Um, I did the um, vintage, oh, and also the drops on there. They're actually decent. You don't get wet, um, although I don't think I'd want to get wet today anyway. Um, obviously, the two major water rides are closed, Storm Force 10 and the Adventure Cove River Rapids, so doing that was good. Um, the drops are a little bit intense on there. I, didn't, I don't say I've got air time, but, well, yeah. Um... <laughs> Also, I did Accelerator as well, um, before, and that was uh, fantastic. Um, I got some a bit of air time on there. I was on, like, the second from the back row, and, yeah, it's, it, it, you know, it's really good family coaster that you really get whipped around there, and, yeah. Um, so, I did Cranky Crane, quite a bit of air time. It's a little bit of a short cycle, but I think a lot of the flat rides here are pre-programmed, and that's a good flat ride just for the park, let alone Thomasland. Um, and I've done um, the vintage cars as well that was fantastic it's a good theme and there's even a little indoor section with some of the classic model characters from the original era of the show it's very well themed in there uh, there's a cat in there as well you've got all the wallpaper and then you go into the barn you've got the cows um, which I quite like there's also loads of animals around and then Winston's Whistle Stop Tour which was great you get some great views over Adventure Cove um, as well as Thomas Land and all the rides yeah, really good family area this. I think the thing is, is that if I compare this to like Nickelodeon Land, the rides are more intense there, but then this has got better theming. And then you look at areas like Peppa Pig World, it's got less intense rides, but then the theming's on par. I think this is a better overall area um, because it's got stuff for really young kids like Submarine Splash, but it's got stuff like Troublesome Trucks for you know, your older kids or even your enthusiasts, you know, we love coming here, like big kids. Like, I mean, I, you know, I love coming on the ride in Thomas Land. I like to cover it because if you come in here and you've got kids, then it's a really, really great area.
Just had another four rides on um, three of the rides here, if that makes sense. So I've done um, accelerator on the second row. Um, it definitely warps, seems to warm up throughout the day. Um, because it was running fantastically, it really was. Um, and you go, if you're on like one of the front two rows, you go really far up the spike. Uh, obviously the, the rollback spike where you go up and then you roll back down um, backwards. Um, and I did shockwave once um, on the second row. Um, on the, uh, the far left seat. And um, it seemed smoother on the second row than it did earlier when I did it on the front row. But... Um, yeah, um, so that was uh, brilliant. Then it, I was going to do it straight away afterwards, and then it broke down. And I didn't know how long, but I left the queue, and I saw an engineer coming as soon as I left the queue. So then I did Maelstrom, um, which seemed to, it felt longer than last time. I don't think it was, but it just felt like it. But I really just tried to take in the views of Thomasland and Adventure Cove that time. Um, she had some great views. Yeah, it's a short cycle. Um, but it is quite forceful. Um, you really feel that wind like far in your face, like your eyes water on there when you really go through, um, like through the loading area. Yeah, incredible. Then I did shockwave again because it had reopened. I saw it tested and then I saw people on it, so I came back on it. Uh, you can just hear it roaring around the track there. Double corkscrew. Yeah, brilliant ride that. Um, I love it, I really do. Um, I will miss the stand-up element. I'm glad I've done it, like, how many times now? Uh, nine times now with a stand-up, and I might do it again next, and then I'm going to do the Pulp Error Express. So, um, yeah, and really, it, it felt smooth on the loop, and the, um, the zero-g roll, your feet always leave the floor. I felt like my feet left the floor on the corkscrews as well. And there was a bit of force as you go into the first corkscrew. Obviously, you feel the force in a different way because it, it's in your feet um, rather than sort of your body. So you don't really feel the, the force as in, in... Well, you feel it in a different way. It's, it's very unique. You kind of need to go on it to get what I mean. Um, obviously, you need to kind of... If you live in sort of near... This is my local park, obviously, but if you live nearby, it's something that I think is worth coming for especially with it changing um, with the you know the whole last stand promotion um, it's still going to be a thrower it's still going to have four inversions the layout's not changing um, you know and you really have to brace for the brakes you just have to like kind of lean forward and just like as you rush into the station and then you just kind of jolt into the brakes and then you kind of lean your head back and just think about what you've just experienced um, but no I love this coaster um, I don't know where I'd place it on my ranking, but it's it's in my top ten UK coasters because um, it's not even. Sometimes it's a little bit head bashy, but it's not painful. It's not rough most of the time when you go on it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do it again because I love it and I why not. And um, this might be my last ride on it. I mean, I remember saying that last time because obviously, uh, well, the. Um, I thought that was going to be my last time before I got this bonus visit, um, this free return. But yeah, I, I absolutely love this coaster. I'm really going to miss it, but it's worth coming here for this now. And even after it to sit down, it's still going to be a good thrill ride for the park. And you probably feel the force in a different way as well. So, and you've still got Maelstrom and Air Race as well. So people saying there's not enough thrill rides. It's family thrill. There's a good few thrill rides and a lot of family thrill rides. But even the family rides, even like Thomasland. Some of the ride hardware is pretty good in there, um, like troublesome trucks. If you're near the back, you get some good forces. Um, so yeah, I've just done a further four rides, and I'm about to do Shockwave again, um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I've just had a further ride on Shockwave. Um, I just can't get enough of it. I mean, knowing that it's becoming a sit-down, um, I've got to get enough rides on as possible. I've had, this is actually my tenth ride on it. Um, in front of the beautifully vibrant station, which I don't think will change because this was only repainted in 2021 um, for Adventure Cove. Um, yeah, yeah, I've really felt the force into the uh, course because I got on the front row. Um, it wasn't that rough, actually. Um, I think it felt really head bashy on the loop earlier, but yeah. Um, it, just over here in front of the rapids, which is closed today. 
Uh, you obviously got the zero G roll up there. Um, you've, my feet left the floor on that and the two corkscrews. Weirdly, I actually think the loop feels the most normal because your feet don't really leave the floor. But on these, like, yeah, I think because what adds to the uniqueness of it is that these are quite tightly profiled inversions and for you going on there standing up, that is incredible. Um, it's not gonna be as unique um, but of course it still has a very unique custom layout because it's all quite high up because obviously it was built above the rapids which came first um, I'm just glad to keep in it um, there's actually a really nice sign in there from 2015 in the station presented by Coaster Force the uh, the 21st anniversary of Shockwave uh, of course the picture of it with the old brown supports and grey track with of course the yellow train on there um, it has changed. I think it, I do prefer this theme because it fits in with Adventure Cove and this coastal town that they've all brought together. Um, yeah, you've got this lovely like, pipe work and a big sort of dial on there. Um, you've got all these chevrons over at the top. Um, but it's, it's a uniquely designed station. You've got obviously the stairs in there and then the station at the top. Yeah. Um, it, like, I am going to miss the stand-up element. That is always going to be the case. However... I'd rather than change it than remove it because to see this get removed would be awful. So just to see, um, just to see this, you know, stay and still have those inversions is incredible. And it's still got four inversions as well. And you'll feel the force in a different way on in going into the corkscrew. I've just been on Sheriff Showdown again, the dark ride. Um, but I do, I do really like the fact that obviously. Um, the, 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 as much as they've only got two like sort of proper dark rides here this and the haunting they have refurbished them like this opened in the year 2000 it was refurbished in 2018 the haunting opened in 1996 but it was refurbished in 2016 and then again in 2019 so um and they just added stuff to it this i mean the star cloth ceiling just looks so much better than just having a blank warehouse roof and also the screen was working this time so you got the sheriff um at the beginning um, and he says at the end, he, he comes back on the screen and says, um, you, may, you may have taken back the West this time, but come back next time. Um, and I think this is the first time I've done this twice in a day, actually. Um, at least since it became Show of Showdown. Um, it definitely is. But um, yeah, and I've got a few bonuses because if you shoot the orange targets, you get a bonus and it says, you've got a bonus and it, yeah you, it, it's normally on like the sheriffs that pop out they've got like an orange target they pop out with a gun um like, there's a few in barrels and there's ones uh, in like windows of the buildings um but it's very well themed in there it's very immersive especially when it's got the screens and i think this is one of the most underrated rides at the park yes at the two dark rides i do prefer the haunting but this is still very good as well um I'm one of my well I think it's probably my sixth favorite ride at the park um, but this is kind of the dead end of the park because drunken barrels is closed it does mean I can stand here and do a review quite quietly rather than with people coming up but um yeah very good dark and I love the facade on it as well obviously you go into the mines and then you go out into the streets and um, to take back the west that wraps up my last right and manor vlog for the season um fantastic uh, really was I got four rides on Shockwave I'm really glad that they're spending the money on it and keeping that ride for the future because it means that this view isn't going anywhere and a similar experience isn't going anywhere either um, of course then I've done the rides in Vikings I just had three more rides yeah I did Accelerator again I was on the front again you really go quite for spike on the front as much as it's more intense near the back but yeah, fantastic ride. Um, it, 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 it always blows me away how good that family coaster is. Like, people say there's like three smaller coasters here, but Accelerate is definitely a step up from the likes of Troublesome Trucks and Your Munganda. Um, I really enjoyed doing um, Submarine Splash again. It's quite relaxing. Um, I did it on my own this time. and The music, yeah, I can still kind of hear it because it gets really stuck in your head. However, it is catchy. I can give it that. So... Um, and those drops aren't too bad, really, um, over there. But, uh, but yeah, it's really nice to see a new investment going into Thomasland as well. Um, I, it's one of my favourite rides in the area now. I've I really enjoyed it after that ride. 
Um, there, I did. I put accelerator on the front. I did um, uh, Loki, which is a great uh, flat ride. A really good. I think that's the best thing they've put into the park since Air Race, which was in 2014. Um, a fantastic investment. Really, really is my favourite ride in, in Vikings. I think most people would probably say Thor. Or maybe Jormungandr, but Jormungandr's my second favourite, but Loki's incredible. Um, you really get, as you're sort of going forwards over the top, you get pushed into the seat and you get airtime, and then when you're going the other way, you kind of, sometimes you get pushed into the back of the seat. Um, I also did Sheriff Showdown again. Um, that was really, really good, because um, the screens are working, you get the, the good, the bad, and the ugly sort of music on there, and you get the the sheriff um take back the west it's it's a lot better with the screen working on there and of course the other dark ride the haunting brilliant um it still stands as fantastic one of the fan most fantastic dark rides in the uk incredible um we have really enjoyed this and um, air race as well <laughs> yes air race and that was uh it's a bit more natural when you're going kind of swinging outwards um but you really do it just pick up some speed as you're going upside down and the hang time's not uncomfortable on it either so um really really good really really good um so shame obviously the two major water rides have been closed i wouldn't have done storm force 10 anyway i don't think um and the rapids that is a shame um but at least i've managed to get on everything and i did get on one water ride with submarine splash which is the second time i've ever done that um but yeah just getting on accelerator four times in a day never done that before so yeah and it's really smooth as well i mean shockwave can be a little bit rough uh, it's a bit rough around the edges i suppose it's because of those sharp transitions and elements on there compared to sort of other coasters they are very sharp and the fact you're standing up and going through those as well they've listened to general public feedback a lot of people aren't happy about it but that ride experience is going to be smoother you're going to feel force in different ways i can see why they've done it i have because obviously it's better than they're just getting rid of it because especially with the money really having three like true thrill rides now it's a great thing for the future of the park to keep that ride up up and going because if they did remove it i don't think they'd replace it with another thrill coaster with four inversions and you know um see i do like coming here and obviously um covering more of thomas land i think that's the most i've done in thomas land how many rides did i do um so i did trucks submarine splash cranky winston six rides yeah winston and the vintage cars and, and of course the uh, rosie um to the zoo and i've even walked around the zoo I've never, i haven't done that for ages so it's been really, really really good um there's still a great mixture of family and thrill rides here um and it was really good doing shockwave the haunting and maelstrom our top three rides here um but yeah i like it, I think the more I come here, the more I look forward to going back. I can say that. And there was a bit of a delay when I did Thor just. Because um, after I did Loki, I did Thor. And yeah, um, it went down, but then I managed to do it. Um, and it was, it really seemed like it picked up the speed on there as it was going. It, it, you know, um, the theming on it's incredible. This is the best themed area at the park. I love Adventure Co for the thrill rides, but this is more immersive. Um, so, but obviously, yeah, three really immersive areas, Adventure Co, Vikings and Thomasland. And Thomasland's great for you if you've got kids. So it's still very much worth coming here. And um, especially this year to do Shockwave one last time as a stand-up coaster.